I also hope it's a wake up call that incremental changes isn't gonna work. And right now, we're orders of magnitude off in the amount of conservation we're doing versus the rate of losses. So I hope that's a wake up call. And I also hope it's enough of a wake up call that we can do what they've done in the past. With that common currency, you get this metric of success where you can actually, instead of thinking about acres spent or dollars spent, you can say, are we actually bending the needle in, in increasing the, the health of the sagebrush? So that's in essence what it, the biggest thing that it does, and it allows you to get a business plan. The sagebrush conservation design in its simplest form is it's just a vision for the ecosystem where you can think about what are the things we want and what are the things that we don't want. And it takes a lot of complex ecology and distills it into these bins of we really want sagebrush landscapes and we really want native uh, understory grasses. That's what we want, it's that simple. What we don't want are some major threats to the biome and the biggest ones are conifer encroachment, invasive annual grasses and human modification. So what it does is it takes that simple model and actually through equations links it to the satellites so that you can map this vision of what does it look like to be good across the entire biome. Every single acre across the whole biome has basically an index score. You can rank them and find the best places. Once you find those best places, you can have that mental picture in your head of like these wide open sagebrush landscapes, beautiful native understories. And when you drive up to them, that's what you see. There is hope for this biome. I think that's the one thing I would really wanna to, to hammer out is you think about the size of the American West and the sagebrush landscape, it's a full one third of the lower 48 and it has the least amount of human modification of anywhere in, in our country. And when you compare it to the world, the places that have less human development than, than the sagebrush biome are places like the Sahara Desert, the Amazon rainforest, the boreal forest, the Australian outback. And so we have places now that have high ecological integrity that are as large as East Coast states, but the threats are large. And I'd also say there's only hope if we manage change because what we've seen here is business as usual is not going to save it. Small incremental changes are not gonna be what it is, but there is hope.